So editing your videos to the beat of a song is a pretty common way to make them flow better and just feel a little bit more dynamic in general. This essentially means that you want to take your clips and line them up in a way where the cuts in between them match up with the beats of whatever song you have picked out. Or you can take something within the clip itself, like footsteps, a door closing, dropping an object, or anything else that stands out, and lining that up with the beats instead. And even though you don't want to use this absolutely all of the time because it can start getting predictable and a little bit boring, it's definitely a very useful technique if you know how and when to use it. That's why in this video I want to show you a DaVinci Resolve plugin that I've been using for the past couple of months that makes this entire process of editing to the beat way faster and easier. Just a quick disclaimer, I did get a license for this plugin for free, but this video is not sponsored in any way. I made it very clear to the people making this plugin that I would only ever talk about it if I genuinely thought that it could be useful to other people, and if I actually see myself using it down the line, which I do. So all of what I'm about to say are my completely honest thoughts and opinions. They were also nice enough to give me three coupon codes for a free license of their plugin. So if you stick around until a little bit later in the video, you can find out how you can enter for a chance to win one. So the plugin is called Beat Edit, and it's basically a tool that allows you to visualize the tempo and the beats of your song much easier directly in the timeline. It's a much better alternative than having to sit there and trying to count and listen for each individual beat. If you decide to pick it up, downloading it and installing it following all of the instructions is pretty simple, and then this is how you use it. You go to Workspace at the top, then down to Scripts, and you should see a folder called Mamo World. Then click on Beat Edit. This is what the interface for working with it looks like, and from the button on the side you can browse to find the song that you want to use this with. Then in the drop down menu you have four options. If you pick create timeline markers and then hit create, the plugin drops a bunch of markers on your timeline in the correct positions that match the beats of the song. I personally don't use this option much because I feel like the other ones work better. Then you have create clip markers. This one is essentially the same, except it adds the markers to the audio clip itself instead of the timeline. I think that this one is much more useful because the markers move around with your song on the timeline, and that's kind of why I like this option the most. Then you have Create Beat Click Audio. This one creates a separate audio track that's basically just metronome clicks that match the tempo of your song. It's also one of the more useful options, and I'll show you why in a second. The last one is create subtitles, and it gives you title layers. Each of them is as long as the beat that it's for, and it has some text letting you know which beat you're on. Again, this is not one that I use too often, but regardless of which ones I like, if you mess around with the plugin for yourself, you can figure out which ones work better for you. Also, at the bottom of the interface, you have this quantize checkbox, and this is for when you're working with a song that has a variable tempo. When it's on, the plugin assumes that the space between each beat will be the same. Most songs will have a constant one, but you could occasionally run into one where the tempo changes over time, and in those cases, you want to uncheck this. So now I want to show you what I've recently personally been using this for. We're going to look at how you can use the Create Clip Markers option when putting together an edit. All you have to do is drop your video clips and match them up with the markers on the audio track. Obviously, you can have some clips be longer and some be shorter, and if you have a look and take a listen, you'll notice that the cuts in the video happen pretty much right when the beats do. This is going to be a lot easier than having to sit there and listening for each individual beat and hoping that you can pick up on all of them and then trying to line everything up correctly. When you think about it, the example I gave you was pretty simple with just a few clips, but if you're working on a timeline that has a lot more footage in it, all of this is going to add up and it can honestly save you hours. Another cool thing that you can do with this plugin is you can make your songs longer or shorter by either looping certain parts of a song or like completely cutting them out. For this, we're going to use the clip markers in combination with the click audio. After you line up your metronome clip with the song itself, you want to look at the colors of each marker. The green ones will always represent the first beat in a measure, and generally speaking, if you're trying to make any changes to a song, it's a good idea to try to cut on a first beat to get the most natural sounding result. You can try cutting on any other beat, but chances are you're going to have a harder time making it work without sounding weird. Now that we know that, if we want to loop a part of our song, we have to find a section between two green markers and cut around it. 
To do this, you want to look at the peaks of the click audio because those are going to be more accurate than the markers. Unfortunately, Resolve can only place markers on frame boundaries, meaning that sometimes markers might land slightly before or slightly after the actual beat. Sometimes with certain songs, that's not going to be an issue, but it's something to keep in mind. Now, and this is probably the only time that I'm going to use the blade tool and resolve, you grab it and you line up the cut exactly with the peak on the metronome track. Then we make some room next to the song and by holding down alt and dragging the part that we just cut out, we can duplicate it and position it right in the empty space. If you have a listen, you'll notice that the part we just cut out loops correctly without sounding out of place. You can also do the exact same thing if you want to make a song shorter, except you delete the part you cut instead of copying it over. Keep in mind that depending on the song you're working with, sometimes you might run into a situation where the cut doesn't sound 100% perfect because of differences in the volume of the sections that you're trying to match up or something else that's going on in the song. So in those cases, you can try to add a little bit of a crossfade to the cut point. And if that doesn't help, maybe just try to do the same process with a different section of the song. Okay, so now that we've got the more technical stuff out of the way, I wanna give you a short list of pros and cons about this plugin. So if we're talking about the pros, first up, we gotta mention that it makes the process of cutting to the beat much more intuitive and easier, even if you're just gonna be doing it for certain sections of your video and not for the entire thing. It can save you hours because it takes care of the hard part of having to listen and then going through and marking all of the beats manually on your own. The interface is super simple and minimal and there's not much that you can mess up when you're using the plugin. The different options for visualizing the tempo are pretty good for different workflows. Also, considering how much this can help, the price of $49 is pretty good and it's not a subscription model. You just buy it once and then you can keep using it for as long as you want. There are also a few cons and the first one is that the DaVinci Resolve version that I just showed you is relatively new. There are versions for Premiere Pro, After Effects, and Audition, and those are a little bit more developed at this point because they've been around for a longer time. But the fact that the Resolve one is newer means that you're more likely to run into some bugs. That being said, from briefly chatting to the developer, I get the feeling that any issues that you might run into are gonna get fixed pretty quickly as long as there's feedback about them. It might also occasionally crash. It happened to me a couple of times, but after updating to the most recent build of Resolve, I haven't had any issues. And as long as you have Live Save enabled, that shouldn't be too much of an issue, even if it does happen to you. And finally, I have to mention that thing where the markers are sometimes a little bit off, but that's an issue with how Resolve handles placing markers and not with the plugin itself, but it's just something that I feel like should be mentioned. Last thing I want to talk about is who this plugin is actually for, and honestly that's a pretty easy question to answer. It's pretty much for anyone who edits videos and wants their music to complement whatever is happening on screen. So whether you're a filmmaker who works on music videos, weddings, commercials, narrative stuff, or you make gaming content, I'm sure that this can fit into any workflow. I genuinely think that this is a piece of software or a plugin or whatever you want to call it that is super adaptable and can be useful in a ton of different use cases. If you want to try it out for yourself, I'll have a link for it in the description below. And don't worry, it's not an affiliate link. So if you really hate me for whatever reason, you're not supporting the channel by clicking on it. All of the money from any sales go directly to the people who made this plugin. Like I said, I have three coupon codes that you can use at checkout to basically get it for free. So if you want a chance to win one of those, go to the comments below and let me know what you think of this plugin, what type of project you're gonna be using it on, and also let me know what your Instagram handle is so that I can actually contact you if you end up winning. Um, just make sure that your Instagram DMs are open so that I can actually message you. I'm gonna try to run this until like the end of the month, which is next Friday. That's gonna be the 31st of March. I hope that's enough time. I'm not really sure if it is gonna be, but that's what I've decided. So good luck. Hopefully you found this video interesting. If there is anything that you feel like I didn't explain well enough, make sure to drop it in the comments below and I'll do my best to try and help out if I can. As always, thank you so much for watching until the end. It genuinely means a lot to me. Consider sticking around by subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.